Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have put together 15 of my best shore living DIYs because shore living is back, baby. I'm so excited. I've got lots of great things and ideas and I wanted to get you guys started with some shore living DIYs. So first up, we're going to be doing a shadow box. And this is a DIY that you can use these little coastal icons. They're like little sea creature shapes from the Dollar Tree. A really creative way to use these and it turned out so cute. So let's go. I'm going to use some of these little wood boxes from the Dollar Tree. Four of them. They have the little like metal file folder like holders at the end. I just needed four tiny little squares. So I think they have these in a couple sizes. But basically you could use whatever you had. Um, you know, you might even be able to use one of those like um, crates from the Target Dollar Spot if you can't find these. But I just picked up four all the same size and I thought we could put it together and then use some of those little shore living um, ornaments to make a cool little coastal shadow box. So I'm going to start by gluing them together. I'm going to do use a combination of hot glue and wood glue, kind of a short term, a long term hold on those and just kind of glue them together trying to make them square. I'm going to use, make sure that the holes where the little um, file folder things that I removed are kind of pointing towards each other. So I will glue those together and I'll have a beautiful like wood finish on all of them. So um, once I get the top two together, I just glue the whole thing together. And these were um, remarkably a square. They fit together really nicely. And now we have a really like large shadow box that we can decorate. I was going to reinforce it on the back with popsicle sticks, but I found that it didn't really need it at all. Now the wood on this is really pretty inside and on like around the edges, but the actual like front of the frames um, are that like unfinished like MDF. So I do want to paint those. So I am just going to go through and tape off everything that I don't want to get any paint on. And then we can go in and paint these blue. The color that I'm using there, I think is the Caribbean blue. Uh, these are just acrylic paint and I'm going to go in and kind of use my chunky brush to kind of give me that coastal like vibe, but I'm going for about as good coverage as I can get. I want to do like the inside of each box where it's at like unfinished MDF wood and the fronts as well. And it's going to make it look beachy with this beautiful like Caribbean blue color, but it's also going to cover up that part of the wood that's not pretty and just leave all of the pretty ones. I don't know why they don't um, kind of finish that off completely. I guess these are supposed to be like little bins, but we're going to use them for frames. So going over, trying to give like a nice like coastal farmhouse vibe on this. And then um, we can dry it and remove all the painter's tape. Taping it was probably the hardest part of the whole process, <laughs> but it did a pretty good job. And doesn't that look cool? Cause it's got like that rustic blue with like the wood coming through, um, very coastal with that like light wood background. Now these are the little ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use like four different ones. They have these every year with the shore living and I was able to find them again this year. And actually I had three of the big ones and I decided to do some smaller, some of the clothespins for the third one, um, these little fish. Now I like popping the clothespins off of these, um, but you gotta be careful cause sometimes they're like really glued down and you're going to end up, um, you know, like splitting your wood or breaking it in half. 
So you might want to use a little bit of heat first. I was just going right after it <laughs> to try to get that off. But I really like these little tiny wood cutouts. I kind of wish they wouldn't have the clothespins on them because, um, you know, I'm not really going to use them like that for a lot of applications. Now, I do want to fill up the hole in the starfish, the sea turtle, and the um, little seahorse. And so I just used hot glue to try to fill that in. You can use spackle. I never really know what works best, but one of y'all told me to try that, so I did. Now we're going to paint our little ornaments. The little starfish has like little circles on it. I kind of wanted just the plain side, so I'm painting the back. And then the sea turtle and the seahorse, and I was able to get two of those little fish off of the little clothespins. And I found that you could still kind of see the holes. And since it's kind of a display piece, I really didn't want you to be able to see the holes in these. So after painting, I did notice that it still needed some filler. So I did go back and spackle them. That's the only thing I like about the ocean creature wood ornaments that I get on Amazon is that they don't have the holes in them. And you could still see the holes after my spackle. And I was like, okay, yeah. I'm going to get serious with this one. <laughs> so I decided to try covering it up with some masking tape. Sometimes I have luck for that. I don't know. Maybe I just don't uh, fill my spackler enough or like give it enough time to dry. But we're going to try the masking tape method because I really don't want to be able to see that hole. And I have filled it twice with glue and with spackle. <laughs> And I'm painting these with that ivory chalk paint, so it's kind of thick. So I think that I can cover up like the depth of the masking tape and it'll kind of make it blend all in. That is my plan anyway. And I think I finally got good coverage there. And then I want them to look, you know, a little distressed. And so I am going to use some Antique Wax by Waverly to distress them slightly. Um, just want a little bit of a tan distress on there. So I'm following that up with a baby wipe to get it just how I want it. And I'm gonna do the same thing with all of them, just kind of working in one direction. I always like to use those little chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree and then a baby wipe to kind of blend it in. It's gonna give us that distressed look and not quite so stark ivory or white. And I just kind of want like an even level of distress on all of them. If you don't think it's distressed quite enough, you can always go back in. And if you distress too much, you can always go back with your original color too. Don't be afraid to try to do it. It's actually pretty easy. But sometimes it does take a couple tries to get it exactly the way that you want it. And now we can put it together. I'm going to do my two little fish here, like kind of swimming in a school. I think it would be really cute if you had three too, but the boxes are not that big. And I, I chose these um, little crates because they were square. I thought that would look cool. And here is our little starfish. I just hot glue that one in there. And our little seahorse on this side. And our little sea turtle over here. I finally got the holes covered in those. I think I should have started with the masking tape first. Now, I wanted it to look like there was a little fishing net. But the fishing net from the Dollar Tree, this is the kind they have in the summer section. I'm not a big fan of it because the holes are kind of too big. So I kind of wanted to show you that in comparison to what I'm going to use. These are the little ombre tote bags from the Dollar Tree. Um, if you see these, pick these up because look how good this material is to make like a tiny fishnet. It does have like half pink, half ivory, but we're just going to use the ivory. I'm just going to cut some out to make some fishing net just to kind of display over on the side. I know that some of you guys have said to use like, I, um, I think the Dollar Tree has the little, you know, no skid rug backers that kind of similar um, color and size that you could also use to make a fishing net but 
since this is kind of more like a miniature project, I thought that I wanted a fishing net with more of a smaller vibe like that. So I just cut a strip of it out and I'm just going to kind of hot glue it here on the back and just kind of drape it over the side just to give me a fun little coastal feel. Just trimming that down a little bit and I kind of like that little effect just kind of dripping over the side and I think these turned out really cute. What do you guys think about our little shore living sea creature shadow box? Hey guys, if you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate it. Turn that bell on also for some notifications. Okay, the next Shore Living DIY, I'm going to show you how you can take a Shore Living sign that's not like the greatest, make it look a lot better. Here's kind of an example of some of the Shore Living signs that I have found this year. It seems that they seem to change these up every year, but to kind of give you some inspiration how you can DIY. Okay, the next DIY is going to be one of these little beach signs from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. We're just going to give it a makeover and try to make it look a little bit better, make it match my coastal decor. So the first step is I'm just trying to remove home. It's like galvanized metal on the sign and I'm going to try to take it off here without any damage. So I'm just using my little Cricut spatula from the Dollar Tree and heat and trying my best to get it off without ripping any of the paper on the sign. And this is going to be a quick, easy DIY. I like these little signs from the Dollar Tree, but I often find I need a little something, right? So we have our home and we have, it says, is where the waves crash. I do want it to still say that, but I just kind of want it to look a little bit better. So it looks like printed paper right now. So I'm using some ivory paint and a chunky brush and distressing slightly working in one direction, following that up with a baby wipe to kind of make it look like more like a hand painted rustic sign. It's already got like the board pattern on there. And I do that a couple of times until I get like my level of distressed. And I find that that can really take those Dollar Tree signs and make them look a lot better. Now for the home, I don't really want it to be galvanized metal. So I'm going to mix that Caribbean blue and ivory together again to give me that beautiful, beautiful beachy blue color. And we're just going to paint the galvanized metal. It's okay if you can see a little bit of the metal through because it's going to make it look distressed. But I do go over it with another coat because I really wanted it to be this really pretty color of blue. I think it's going to contrast nicely with the blue that's already on the sign and it's going to kind of make it go with my um, coastal vibes in my house. Now I do go in and distress it very lightly with some antique wax by Waverly too. Um, kind of like I did the ivory just to add some more color variations, a little bit more distressing and just to make it look better. This is probably like a Dollar Tree hack because we're just going to take their existing sign and just apply some techniques that's just going to really take it up a notch. So there's our home word. Doesn't it look better in blue? I think it really does. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue that back on our sign. And home is where the waves crash. I just love these signs. I love the whole short living line. I want mine to be standing up. So I'm just going to glue on a couple of these. These are the giant Jenga blocks. I get these every spring. I'll have to check to see if they have them this year at five below. But just to make it a standing sign to go on my shelf for summer and uh, that's how it turned out. Um, when you glue the blocks onto the back, make sure you don't go all the way to the bottom because you want it to slightly lean back so it's not like a tippy sign. But I think it looks a lot better now. What do you guys think about my little makeover? Okay, the next Shore Living DIY, we're going to do a Shore Living wreath form. 
Now, I don't know if they're going to bring this one back this year. I sure hope they do. It is the starfish wreath form. Yesterday, I was able to find the mermaid tails and the seashells. So hopefully, they're going to bring back the starfish one as well. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Okay, let's DIY. Check out this cute little starfish wreath form from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. We are going to make a cute version of this that's a little bit different than any of the other ones that I've seen. We're going to use some of this 11 foot white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And at first thought you would think, you know, you're just going to wrap it. But you know what? Star shape can be a little tricky to wrap, especially one with all these rays going in kind of different directions. So what we're going to do is just hot glue the white rope onto the reform, just shaping out the shape of the star is what we're going to do first. So we're just going to bend that on the ray and just keep gluing that around. I thought we could cover like all of the little metal parts with rope and then we can further decorate it from there. I kind of wanted a little bit of color to mine and so I'll show you how I did that as well. This wreath turned out so cute, one of my favorites for sure. So just using that same piece of 11 foot, you're definitely going to be able to go all the way around here. And then you can cut it to size once you figure out exactly how long you need it to be. So that's our first row. Now we also have to cover up like this interior part. So just starting at the tip as low as you can go and gluing that up to the center. This first one I thought, you know, maybe I would go like straight across like that and cover up that little center section. Once I did it though, I decided I didn't really, I wasn't a big fan of that. So I am going to cut it and do like a separate piece for each side. Some of these pieces on the side are really short. And so you can just cut your pieces down to size. I just kind of measure mine first and cut it. That way all I have to do is put some hot glue on there and glue that down to the reform. And you can kind of see the shape of this taking shape. Just a few more rungs and then we can start decorating this little guy. Now, whenever you hot glue to the reform like that, you are kind of going to have a little bit of a hot glue mess on the back. You can clean it up a little bit with hot glue. I thought one of these little Dollar Tree um, sand dollars would be perfect to cover the center part there where it's kind of crazy. But they're a little gray for my liking, so I'm just going to paint mine with a little ivory acrylic first just to brighten them up because I love a good ivory sand dollar. That looks way better and look how cute that looks there. It's going to cover up all this like rough circle portion here and it's going to give us a cute little center to our starfish. Now I didn't want to stop there. I wanted to keep decorating and these are the little seashells that come in the little glass bottles from the Dollar Tree that they have all the time. And I love these white ones with the little brown spots on them. I think they're just the cutest. So I just picked out a bunch of those. Even though those come in little glass bottles, I like storing them in those little toy organizers from Dollar Tree because you can they can be a little tricky to get out of the box when you're, when you're crafting. So I'm gonna do like one at the base of all of my little short rows of rope there kind of in a symmetrical pattern. And then about halfway down the little longer portions, also one at each tip. So kind of an all over with this seashell. You could use whatever seashell you have. It's gonna be cute, but I really love this color. I think it looks really good with that Dollar Tree white rope. So just a few more here and then I can show you how I decided to add a little bit of color to mine. It would be uh, really cute as is if you had a colored door, especially if you had a blue door, that would be just beautiful. Um, while I still have it open, I'm going to tie a little twine into a quick knot here just to make a little hanger before we get any further. 
But this is how we're going to add color. I'm going to use some of this beautiful light blue tulle from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I find my Crafter Square, some of them carry this all the time in a couple different colors. I thought this color would look nice, beachy and blue. Now, the only issue with it is it's not very wide, as you can see, but we're going to make it work. You can always overlap it if you need be. I was trying to figure out how much blue I wanted. If I double it up like that, you're going to get more blue. And so that's what I decided to go with was like a double layer of that tool. So I'm just going to glue that to the back of my wreath form. One section at a time. That's going to cover up this part of the wreath. Just making sure it's glued down to all of the wreath forms tightly. Then I'm going to double up another row here. And kind of patchwork this together. I decided to go right next to the one that I just did and just do a slight overlap when I attach this to it. And as you can see, two like almost fill the entire starfish in, but I do have a little bit left that I do have to cover still. Just kind of cutting up that little area so they don't overlap quite so much. And then just a double layer over here at the very tip of the starfish ray. Now that I have it all glued on, um, this is a good time to trim all of the excess fabric off of it. That way you know that it's all going to be covered and glued down tight. You won't have any holes showing through. And this material, super thin, super easy to cut. And it totally gave me that effect. And from the front, you can't even see any of the seams. So don't really worry about that if you have to overlap yours. And isn't that cute? I just love how the starfish wreath turned out. And I hope you do too. I hope it gave you some crafting inspiration. And hopefully you can find this little wreath form at the stores soon. I love how that turned out. Hey guys, I wanted to get, let you guys know about my private Facebook group. I always have it linked below. I'd love it if you join us. I'm also really active on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle on everything is Crafty Beach on YouTube. So come connect with me over there. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, the next Shore Living DIY, I wanted to do a seahorse DIY. Now, I noticed that the seahorse sign that they have this year is a little bit different. This is what it looks like. I really like it. And I think you could probably make this DIY work with the new version of the seahorse sign. So for the first one here, um, I'm going to be using the one that they had the past few years. And two of these wall shelves from the Dollar Tree, these are like the thicker, chunkier ones that are really skinny. Um, you could use any kind of rectangular sign. Um, I felt, liked this one because I like that wood finish on there. And I like the fact that it already has holes where the rope hangs at the little shelves. And I have a plan to use those. I don't want to use like the existing rope that's on there though. It's a little too thick. I need to be able to get a couple through the holes. And so I'm just going to go ahead, cut all of that rope off and just keep the two signs that we're going to put together. And I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree twine to do this. I had an idea that it would be really cool to do like a fishing net. And I didn't really have anything that would work, so I thought we could try to make our own, right? So this is the twine from the Dollar Tree that I'm using. It is not the super thin one, but it's pretty small. The first step is just a bead of hot glue all along one of the shelves to glue the two together. They're nice and thick. They glue, they glue together really well. You don't really have to reinforce it at all. And then I want to start stringing this Dollar Tree twine through so we can start building a, a fishing net. 
I've done like kind of smaller scale fishing nets. I've never really done anything quite this big, um, but I did go online to kind of figure out how to make one. So that's fun. So I'm just going to feed it through all of the holes here on top just because they're there. Um, you don't necessarily have to go through those middle ones. And then I cut it long enough that I can just tie it here at the top. And then we're also going to have a hanger. So that works. Now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have went through the middle holes um, because on the bottom, I do have to remove those to do the final step in this DIY and kind of replace it. But I do need it there temporarily, so I guess it's going to work. <laughs> so we have our ropes at the top and the bottom. And then we also need ropes to go along like each side of our sign. And it does make it easier if you put a little bit of hot glue and shape the end. If you're going to be feeding it through the holes, especially when there's already a twine through that hole. So I fed it through that top and I just go all the way behind it because I've already got like twine going through. That way I can do both sides. So I go through the bottom on that side and go through the bottom on this side. Again, the hot glue is a great trick. I don't know, one of you guys told me about that. And then I'm just gonna tie it off on the back like we did before. So we have twine all the way around and now we can start with the fishing net. So I just kind of pinch a piece in half and I'm just kind of estimating how long I'm gonna need it to be. Cause I know there's gonna be lots of knots. I probably should have went a little longer because it was close here at the end. But basically I just fold it in half like that, loop it around the very top and pull it tight like that. So we have two um, of the twine pieces hanging off there. And I kind of try to center it a little bit because we're also going to be going in with another one here and looping that through as well. And so now we have like four rows of twine. Um, I try to tape it down a little bit just to kind of make it easier because there's going to be like pulling and tying to try to get this. But basically you take one from each side and then you're going to do, I think it's called an overhand knot where you just grab both of them and tie it in a knot together and pull it tight. And that is a way that they make the fishing nets. Now on the sides, it's a little bit different because you've only got one piece going on the side. So what I did is I just tied that on there, just a simple knot. About the same, um, I'm trying to make a row. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side as well. And we have like our first row of like triangles. Now I take this one and this one and I'm going to do an over, I think it was called an overhand knot. I need to look that up again. And then I take the other two and do the same. And so now see we have like the two triangles there. And now we can take the two middle ones again and tie off a another row, trying to keep my, um, you know, little diamonds about the same shape. And then I take my side piece and tie it on the side again. And then we're gonna go on the other side and complete a another row. So you can probably get the feel for it. My painter's tape was not like doing the best holding it down. I tried to tape it down with something a little stronger. So we're gonna do the two on the left. And I don't know if my string was not quite tight enough because I did find it kind of going in on the sides a little bit more than I'd like, but I'll show you how I fix that. I'm gonna do the middle one and then we're gonna tie off both sides again to complete another row. And we're gonna keep doing that until we get all the way to the bottom. As you can see, I started getting a little short on a twine. I didn't know if I was going to have enough, but I did in the end. And so I'm just gonna kind of try to space it out until um, I can get to the bottom and I just tie that off on the bottom, kind of in that same diamond shape. Now, since it did seem like it was kind of warped, I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to stretch that back out and give me that full fishing net pattern that we're looking for. But isn't that cool? I thought that would be a cool way to try to display the little seahorse for this sign. So I just kind of 
space that out, glue it down on both sides. And I think that the little seahorse will fit inside the net just fine. I want to make it look like the little seahorse is like trapped inside the fishing net, if you know what I mean. So kind of like peeking out a little bit. That's when I realized that I wasn't going to be able to slide it in because I did use those center holes there at the bottom. But that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and remove them. And then I can replace it after I am done putting it through there. So looks like it's going to fit in there. And so now we just need to paint it. I kind of want it just to be like a plain beachy coastal blue seahorse. And so I'm going to be working on the back of it where it doesn't have like the wood burning on it. That way I don't have to cover any of that up. So all you got to do is remove the tag and the hanger. I'm mixing a couple colors together, Caribbean blue and ivory to give me this really soft blue beachy color. I love that color. And you know, the raw wood from Dollar Tree is so easy to paint. So we're just going to go all over with the blue. One coat is definitely plenty. And then I do want to distress it a little bit. So after I dry it, I'm going to go in with a chunky brush and some ivory and just kind of distress, like working in one direction to give it that coastal farmhouse vibe. And if you get a little bit too much on there, you can follow that up with a baby wipe. You can go back in with like your original color. Just kind of distress it to your liking. I don't want to do a lot of details on this because it's going to be kind of behind the detail that we already made, which was the fishing net. So I think just a little bit of color is really all that it needs. Okay, I think it's ready to go. We can slide this inside the fishing net now. So I go in from the bottom and just kind of work it all the way up until the little seahorse is peeking out from behind. So it fits in there just perfectly on the size shelf. Um, it really worked out well, but I do have to replace the bottom twine um, to hold it in place. So I just come in from one corner and tie that back off where I had it kind of tied before. It's okay if there's more than one knot there. And um, then tie it off on the back. My camera died there for a second. And then kind of like pull it down around the tail to secure that in place. And then the top of the seahorse is kind of like peeking out from the top as well. But isn't that cool? I thought that was really fun. This is definitely an original idea. I've never seen this anywhere. And I take some of the Dollar Tree twine, the thinner one, and I'm just going to do a very simple little finger bowl bow just to cover up that little hole in the top. And I really don't want any other details with this. I think this is perfect as is. It is a little seahorse. Um, he accidentally got caught in a fishing net, but don't worry, we're going to let him free, right? And this is how it looks hanging in my home. I love this. I think this is something that I can display year round in my coastal house. And it's just a fun little touch to the seahorse sign. Okay, coming up next, we're going to be doing a tray for my coastal bathroom. I really love this. I don't know if they're bringing back the beach houses this year, though. I haven't seen them yet at my Dollar Tree. But if you can't find them, I think these signs would work really well. They're the little slatted wood house signs from Dollar Tree right now, and you can customize. Okay, next DIY, we are going to make a little coastal shelf to go on the back of my toilet <laughs> for my beachy bathroom and I'm gonna make it out of two of these little skinny wall shelves from the Dollar Tree. You could use these, you could use craft wood, that would work as well. The reason I liked these is because they're really thick and I think they're gonna hold up well and they actually have um, on the back of the toilet to hold things and give it a little decorative touch as well. So two of those together is like the exact size of the back of my toilet. And then I'm going to use two of these little houses from the Dollar Tree Shore Living section. And then I also had one left over from the Target Dollar Spot from one of those little um, tear tray starter kits, I think. 
But you could use any of these other options from Dollar Tree as well. They have so many house shapes. I like the fact that my houses are gonna be different sizes and I like that they're all a little bit different color. I do like these little houses. The only thing I don't like is that little foam glitter sticker on there. I think we can do better than that. You gotta be really careful when you remove these though. I'm just hitting it with a little heat for my heat gun and trying to pull it off as carefully as I can to get as little damage because that paper on there will rip. But I love these little houses, the little on beach time and it's a beach thing. I think this is gonna look good in my son's bathroom. Trying to clean up a little bit of the adhesive, but that's okay. We're gonna cover it up anyway with something a little cuter. I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree seashell um, a little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon and a Dollar Tree sand dollar for the other house to cover the star that was on there. I think I got that for, it was for 4th of July, I think. So we're just going to glue down the little Dollar Tree sand dollar. Looks really cute on that little house. And I kind of wanted it to look like a row of beach homes on the back of my tray. So we're going to glue down the little Dollar Tree um, seashell, and then this is a little tiny starfish. I get those on Amazon. Those are always linked in my shop below. And then I'm gonna kind of put this all together. The first step is attaching these two together. I'm just gonna do a bead of hot glue all the way down and glue these together. I got really lucky that the size was exactly what I needed. Now I also got some Dollar Tree craft wood um, so we can kind of make this into a tray. So I'm going to cut this piece down the same size as that sign and just remove the tag on there. And that is going to give me the back um, side of my tray. And I can just attach it kind of like that. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue all along. And I didn't use any wood glue at all on this project and it is held up perfectly. It's very sturdy. And this, as you can see, that Dollar Tree craft wood is pretty um, thick too, even the thinner kind. And then I can line my little houses along the back of it like that. So I'm gonna take another piece of that same craft wood, cut it down to size, remove the tag, and we can put that on the front. Now I'm gonna leave it like this raw wood. Um, I think that's gonna give me a nice coastal vibe. It's okay that it's a little bit different finish from the shelves. It's gonna make it look more unique, I think. So I just glued the front part of the tray down just like the back. And now I have one more piece here. I can cut down sides for these. I'm gonna get to go end to end on the sides. Kind of sandwich that in there. That way I can just glue that to the end. So I'm gonna go here on the other side and cut down another piece. So super easy, just a little bit of hot glue on the two sides of the frame. And we're gonna sandwich that in there up against the bottom of the shelves where everything is kind of square, kind of flush. And we're gonna get this cute little tray. Who knew that a tray was so easy to put together, right? Okay, now it's time to make this cute. <laughs> I want to use those little houses. Two of those and one of this little one fit in there just really nicely. I kind of like the two big ones kind of next to each other and the smaller one at the end. Then I thought I should do a little fence all the way around to make it look like a little shore fence at the beach. And so I'm just going to do that with popsicle sticks. So... I'm not gonna bother cutting like a fence post, you know, like a point on it or anything. I think I'm just gonna use like the arch that's already on there. I think that'll be really cute. So I'm gonna use that one for reference and we're gonna go through and cut down a bunch of these. Two size, you can definitely get two out of one popsicle stick. And I'm just gonna cut down enough to go all the way around like all four sides, it's going to provide like a decorative fence touch, but it's also going to make the sides of the tray a little bit higher and make it a little bit more functional. So 
So I thought I would give myself kind of a little line here to kind of look like a little wire connecting the fence together. Um, I thought about actually stringing wire around them, but I thought I just kind of wanted to look a little bit of a line, not so much the actual wire sticking up. So I just kind of lay mine all on there first so I can kind of get my spacing the way I want it. I'm not gonna measure anything. We're just gonna start gluing those on all the way across. Isn't that a quick, a simple fence? I thought that was really easy. And it's gonna give you that same raw wood that we used that's in the craft wood so it goes together nicely. We're just gonna leave that raw wood as well. This toilet is kind of like right next to the shower in this bathroom. So it is gonna have a little bit of moisture going on. So I definitely want this to be as sturdy as possible. And then we're gonna just start hot gluing our little houses to the back of that craft wood. And they don't have too much of a roof line on there um, to worry about the two next to each other. They just fit in there kind of like a glove. That looks super cute. Then I was thinking, you know, I really do need to keep doing my fence all the way around. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and cut enough popsicle sticks just for the sides. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a double amount so I can do the other side as well. And same thing, we're just gonna glue them, kind of spacing them out just by eye. And I love working with popsicle sticks because they're so easy to cut. You can just cut them with some heavy duty scissors. Okay, check this out. We got a little tray for the back of the toilet. And you know, I kind of thought it still kind of needed that line around it. And I didn't think you could really see it with the paint. So instead of wire, I thought that really thin twine from the Dollar Tree might work. And so I just glue that to the back and wrap that all the way around. And I thought that was the final touch. This holds like all the things that are like normally on the back of the toilet. And I'm just kind of gluing that down in front so it kind of stays in place. But that's gonna also help holding all the popsicle sticks on there. But again, I've had no problems with this falling apart at all. It's the perfect size for some toilet paper or whatever else you have sitting on the back of mine. I think we actually have reptile bath stuff there because my son has a bearded dragon. And this is how it turned out. Isn't it super cute? I love it. It's decorative and it is, serves a purpose. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know about my new website, craftybeach.net. It's gonna be a central hub for all of my crafting. It is a new website that I just designed and it is going to have a link to all of my videos, but it's got lots more too. When you click on one of my blog posts, you're gonna be able to see all of the photos of all of the DIYs for my videos and you can even pin them on Pinterest so that you can remember to DIY them. If you scroll down, you can find the DIY video that shows you exactly how I put them together. And right now it's brand new. So I have Easter on there, but more to come. It also has a link to my Amazon shop where you can see all the items that I recommend on Amazon. And it even has a link to my Etsy store so you can get my fun crafting memes and my printables downloaded. So craftybeach.net, be sure to check it out. I'm really excited about it. It's been a while coming, but I'm so glad I finally got it launched. Okay, the next shore living DIY, we're gonna be making a planter for those beautiful shore living like floral picks. Now, they change the signs every year and so they do have an equivalent this year. This is what they're gonna look like this year. They're on the website, but I haven't found them in my store yet, but you could totally do the same DIY um, instead of using the signs they had last year, but use these new ones. So these are the ones they had last year. I think they're really pretty. Um, I would be happy if they brought them back, but so far no sign of them. And again, they 
did seem to change a lot of the signs this year, but most of these ideas are pretty universal. So I'm going to start with two of them. And I am just taking them apart by pulling the twine and the staples out of the back of them. So I have little square signs to DIY with. Basically, I'm going to need a five of these out of the six. And I want to make a planter box with these, kind of like doing a different one on each side. And then I'll also need one for the bottom. So those are the five that I chose. And then we can start putting these together. I like that is what I'm kind of talking about, like making a box of them and then having one for the bottom. So to put it together, I'm gonna use some of the little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna glue one up near the top of one, or actually that's the bottom, kind of flush with the bottom and then one near the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue blocks on the other side in the same place. That's gonna give me something to glue to because these little signs are so thin um, so that I can put it together. So I'm gonna do starfish on one side and I'll put the seahorses on opposite sides since I only have three different designs instead of four. And so this one is going to be the other side. I am just going to do the same thing, gluing one at the very bottom and one at near the top. Not all the way. I don't want you to be able to see it when we go to put it together. So that is the coral piece. Now I thought it would be best to distress them now before I put it together. And so I'm just using a chunky brush and some ivory acrylic, just distressing in one direction. It's going to take those like printed, cheaper looking signs and make them look uh, more like hand painted, more rustic. But I love the little white shapes on there. I love the colors of these signs. I think they're perfect. I think a little distress is all they need. So this is how we're going to put it together. We're going to start with a little hot glue on each side of our little Jenga block and square this up. Now make sure you get this on there good and let it dry because you're going to want that joint to be as strong as you can get. So we have one side on, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side, which was also the seahorse and put that on there and try to get that as square and as tight as we can, kind of holding that in place until it dries. A little bit of patience is required on the glue drying there. You could um, use wood glue, but it's gonna take, it's gonna take a lot longer, I think, to dry. Now here is the other side. I'm gonna do just one side at a time because I'm trying to act quickly while my hot glue is still hot and you can work with it, but then holding it until it sets up for sure. So exercise a little bit of patience, otherwise your little floral box is gonna be kind of uh, not sturdy. So then I just kind of pull it up a little bit, put hot glue on the other two little Dollar Tree Jenga blocks and then glue the fourth side on. And we have a little box. Now the reason I did a fifth sign is because it would be the perfect size for the bottom. But I'm gonna kind of do the starfish up like that just so I have a flat finished bottom on my piece. And you won't ever know that that's got a starfish on it anyway. I put hot glue on all four of my pieces and a little along the edges and I just secure that in place. And now we have a little floral box and I'm so excited to decorate this with new items that I found at the Dollar Tree and New Shore Living Greenery. So I'm gonna take some of the Dollar Tree green foam, uh, the little squares, we're gonna pile those in there to kind of give me something to put all of the picks and the different greenery in. Now it is a rather large box and so I still have a lot of area to fill up. So we're gonna go in with like pretty much a whole bag of the Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. I think this kind of looks like seaweed. It's gonna give you that coastal vibe and it's gonna work as a great filler in our little floral box. 
So that's pretty much how one box looks. Now we can start filling this up. Now check out this new greenery that I found at the Dollar Tree. They have lamb's ear. I've only seen this at one of my stores, but I was so excited. It's so high end. It looks just like the lamb's ear that you would buy at more expensive stores. And it's kind of got two like pieces on there. I'm gonna cut it down into two, make two picks out of each one. And I just love it. I think the, you know, the kind of fuzzy lamb's ear is going to kind of go with my coastal vibe and my colors. And I love the softness of it. I'm just using my little floral scissors from the Dollar Tree to cut those down. And I want it to be as full as possible. So I am using three bunches of the lamb's ear. And then I'm going to use some of this glitter coral. I think this was from 4th of July. I can't, I find this often at Dollar Tree though, but you know, I was just at one of my Dollar Trees. They already had graduation set and they already had 4th of July set. So I went ahead and bought graduation because my son is graduating from high school this year. Isn't that exciting? And then um, I, I already bought some 4th of July stuff too. I couldn't believe they had it out. It was the same store that put Shore Living out first. I, I congratulated them on being on their game. <laughs> but we're going to scatter the little glitter coral kind of all over, filling that out. I think that gives you that nice coral touch. If you have some of those little trees, um, ornaments that look like coral from Christmas, you could use that as well. But I kind of wanted something a little taller, and this definitely fit the bill, so... Just cutting those down into individual sprigs and kind of putting those all over. Now, these are the new Shore Living items that we're going to use. I'm going to use two of the little seahorse Shore Living Coastal Picks. Oh my gosh, I am in love with these. They are beautiful. They have them with green seahorses and they have them with ivory. Um, if you want to see what I found, I do have a Shore Living shopping haul out that I put out last week. And you can see everything that I found, but aren't they cute? So I'm going to use two, one kind of on each side, kind of with my seahorses facing each other, different heights, different depths, just to break it up a little bit. And I love it. I'm going to finish it off with just a little bit more Spanish moss, just because all of that, putting the greenery in there kind of caved everything down a little bit. And I do want it to look full. I thought this was so easy to put together and I love it. It looks great for a coastal decoration using these new shore living signs. Coral, seahorse, starfish, and we have the wonderful little seahorse picks. They are so cute. And how about that Dollar Tree lamb's ear? Very impressed with that and I had so much fun putting this DIY together. Now up next, we're gonna have another Shore Living sign makeover. This year they have a sign that is pretty close. It is one of the long board signs though. It's not a framed one, but I think you could probably do just about the same thing with this home sign by replacing like the cheap little shelf that they already have on it. Okay, next Shore Living DIY. I picked up one of these little home signs from the Dollar Tree that has the little sand dollar on there um, made out of like cardboard wood. Um, I thought it would be prettier if it was like a more realistic looking sand dollar. So I'm just gonna use some heat and try to pop this off without causing too much damage with the paper that's on there. I love the color of the sign and I love a blue sign with white. I think it looks really beachy, but I thought we could give it a slight makeover. I did notice that it was tearing the paper, so I'm just going to try to cut that off there at the base so I can do as little damage as possible. Um, I do want to kind of glue that back down now, so I am going to use some of that spray adhesive from the Dollar Tree and just kind of try to glue that down a little bit, even though our new sand dollar won't cover all of that up. But isn't that a pretty sign? I think it's really pretty to start with. Now, my first plan was to use some of the little Shore Living sand dollars, and you totally could. It'd be really cute if you did. Let me show you what that's going to look like. The only thing I thought, it was a little bit smaller than the letters, um, 
And I did have some real sand dollars that I got on Amazon that were slightly bigger. And so I'm just going to go with that one. Just kind of, I think it's a little bit more to scale, but you could totally use the ones from the Dollar Tree. I just happen to have these already. So that's the one we're going to use. That's the winner. So I am just going to simply glue that back on. It's going to cover up all that paper damage from taking off the other one. And you could use like a large shell as well. That'd be really pretty on this sign. I think anything is going to be prettier than kind of the one that was already on there. Not a big fan of that look. Now I was thinking I love the color of the sign and I love like the white writing on there, but I'm not really a fan of this color of frame. So I thought we would give that a quick makeover as well on this DIY. And we're gonna do that by mixing some ivory acrylic with some antique wax by Waverly because I wanna go for that like driftwood look, not that like bright yellow wood look that's already on there. So I'm just gonna go and kind of distress like that. Um, if some of that wood shows through, that's okay. It's gonna give me, you know, that same wood grain pattern but it's gonna be definitely a softer like driftwood finish in the final result. Just trying to be really careful because I don't have it taped off or anything and I'm trying not to get paint on our cute little sign. And I hope you guys are excited about the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree this year. I know that I am. I, my store had maybe half of their set, maybe a third and um, I recognized a lot of items from last year and the year before, but I also noticed a lot of new items. Now I want this to be a standing sign to sit on a shelf, not hanging. So I wanna cover the holes in the frame. And I thought if I use some of this Dollar Tree white rope, I can make a really cute little rope with like little knots at the end. It's gonna give me that like, you know, nautical touch with a little tied off nautical rope but it's also going to serve the purpose of covering up those holes there on the top. So I was trying to decide if I wanted to loop it like a hanger or just leave it straight. Honestly, I think it would be really cute both ways. And I also wanted to give a quick distress on the sign. I know I love it already, but if you distress it with a little bit of ivory, it's gonna kind of give you more of that coastal farmhouse vibe. You guys know, I distress everything. But you have to be really careful when you're distressing on this like printed paper from the Dollar Tree, um, cause you don't wanna damage that at all. I kind of decided I wanted it to be more of a handle so I'm just gonna glue the little knots straight on where the little holes are here at the top. And that is a much beachier little handle than what was on there before. And you could honestly hang it like that if you wanted to. I'm gonna use some of these little blocks that I get every spring at Five Below. They're giant Jenga blocks. They're great. You could use whatever you have, the Dollar Tree wood blocks, craft wood. Basically, I'm just gonna make a stand for mine. Just by gluing a couple of these on the back, you wanna make sure that you don't go all the way flush with the bottom. Otherwise, you're gonna have a sign that wants to tip over a little bit. But if you go almost to the bottom, it will slightly lean back and it makes a really good stand for a thin sign like this to be able to stand up on its own. And this is how it turned out. And this is it displayed with my other coastal DIYs. I think it's really pretty and sweet and definitely beachy. Now on the next Shore Living DIY, I want to be able to frame one of the beach canvases. They do have those back this year with new designs and they're really pretty, but I don't see any of the framed wood um, signs. So I think one of these from the Crafter Square would work really well to frame one of the canvases from the Dollar Tree. So a great substitute. I'm going to combine a couple of the shore living items together. One of the little shore living signs. What I want off that is that galvanized metal word that says beach. So I'm going to try to just remove that with some heat and my little Cricut spatula. 
I'm trying not to like rip the paper or cause any damage to the sign. And we got that off. Now, I do want to use the sign though. This is a shore living sign. Doesn't matter which one, because we're going to cover it with one of their little canvases that they also have in the shore living line. They, they have this one again this year. Um, they also have different ones. You can kind of go with whichever one you like the best. I love crafting with these little canvases. I always like to kind of remove them from the canvas and DIY them into something a little bit more finished than an unlike framed canvas. Um, I'm just trying to, I, I started with like staples, just trying to remove that. And then I was like, you know, it might be even easier just to try to cut it off. <laughs> So that's what I did mostly is just use my razor blade and try to cut that off the back of the frame. Kind of a combination of that and my pliers. And then I realized my box cutter actually did a better job of popping those staples out than my pliers. Just want to free it, but I also didn't want to cause any damage on the sides because I want to frame this out with that Dollar Tree Shore Living sign. And so I need as much fabric with that pattern on there as I can because the canvas was definitely smaller than the photo or the frame. So I'm going to start trimming this down to size, cutting off that back part with the staple holes and the white. And then I'm um, kind of measuring to see exactly how big I need this canvas to be. And then I'm just going to use the frame for a guide and my razor blade and start cutting this down to size. Basically, it was like um, every I needed all of it except for the very back part. So you can kind of like just cut along the fold for the very back part. That's why I was kind of glad that I did not um, mess with the sides at all because I definitely needed them to fill up the frame. And this is just a great way to frame one of these cheap little canvases from the Dollar Tree very inexpensively. And I also have that galvanized metal beach word that will be really fun as well. Now, I was kind of worried that you were gonna be able to see this through the canvas. I'm not sure if if you really could, but just in case, I'm just going to go over the whole thing with some white just to kind of give myself a blank canvas, just some white acrylic. It can be as a crazy as possible, doesn't really matter. Just trying to mask that because sometimes when I Mod Podge stuff on, you can see through it. And that's what we're gonna do is just attach it with Mod Podge. I'm gonna do like a rather thick layer of the Dollar Tree Mod Podge. Um, doesn't matter which one you use, you're not gonna be able to see it. We're just using it for the glue. And then we're gonna lay our canvas on the frame and smooth it down. Now you could try ironing it from the back maybe to get those wrinkles out. I'm trying to like just smooth it down the best that I can with some baby wipes. And that also cleans up any Mod Podge that might be um, like kind of pouring out the sides. I was able to get it down pretty smooth, but I am gonna decorate it a little bit as well. So um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but yeah, you might wanna iron it because there, there definitely was some wrinkles in it when you do this method. I just made sure that all of my corners were like really glued down and that this was gonna stay on there. I also just used my scraper too. And then I kind of wanted just to finish off the edges just because my cuts were not completely perfect. And I thought that the jute twine would give it another little coastal touch. This is that thicker jute twine that I get at Walmart by the roll but you could kind of use whatever you have. I like this because it's thicker than most of them that I find at Dollar Tree. And then it is a little rough though, so I'm just burning off all the fuzzies on those. I cut one down for each side, and then we can just attach those to kind of frame it out a little bit. They'll kind of sit inside the little wood frame, 
but also cover up the seams of our painting. Um, I do go over the whole thing with another coat of matte Mod Podge just to make sure it stays down. And I didn't want this going anywhere. I may have excessively Mod Podged it down, <laughs> but it turned out really good. And so now I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue along the top edge and just put that jute twine in there. And that definitely covered up my seam. Little trick you can do when it's something looks a little imperfect like that. And anytime you can use rope or jute or anything like that, it's going to give you another little coastal touch to your DIY. Just one side at a time, just gluing those down. And it's already looking a little bit better. Now here is the little beach word that we took off the sign. I don't want it to be the galvanized metal. I kind of want mine to kind of look like driftwood. So I mix a little ivory paint with some antique wax by Waverly to give me this pretty like tan color. And I am just going to paint it working in one direction, kind of giving it like a little bit of a wood grain. It's okay if some of the metal shows through. It's going to make it look even more like coastal. And now we can glue this back to the canvas or to the picture frame, this time with a beach canvas in between. And I think this looks a lot better than it originally did. I love this painting of the beach. It totally looks like the beach here in Vero Beach. Now the hanger was like not straight at all on this. I'm not sure what they did when they were putting this on. So we're just gonna remove this and do our own thing. I have this little um, sawtooth hanger that I pulled off the canvas. And so we'll just use it instead. These are great because you can just nail them into the frame. No little tiny screws or anything like that to try to mess with. Now, this is the decoration part I was saying that might cover up like the little fold there in the bottom, the little wrinkle. <laughs> I'm just going to use Dollar Tree seashells and we're just going to hot glue those all along the bottom. I try to pick out like a variety of shells and colors. You can find some really good seashells from the Dollar Tree, but you could always use the ones that you have from the beach. I really tried to choose uh, some unique ones to kind of fill it all up and it's going to give you a fun little decoration for a little beach sign. Now I took those two items from the Dollar Tree. So like very inexpensive way to DIY this. And then I have that market pantry bag that we used for the shadow box. I'm just going to cut out some more of that fishnet just to kind of get another little decoration for our little beach sign. And I like to use the pink part too for Valentine's Day, for coastal like Valentine's Day. And I'm going to kind of drape it along the side on this one as well. I think that looks kind of cool. And it provides a fun little finishing touch to this DIY. Just going to hot glue it here on the back. And just kind of swag it down the side. Isn't that cute and beachy? I love how this turned out. It's one of my favorites. The painting is nice and bright and they have so many different styles. I think I have like maybe six um, beach paintings all completely different. And this is how it turned out. This is how it looks hanging in my dining room. I really love all the little beachy touches on there. And I was able to find the market bags like that actually at Target Dollar Spot this year. Now for the next DIY, yes, they actually brought it back. They brought back the little metal tin pails, um, little pots from the Shore Living Line. They have all the same patterns, the seahorse, the starfish, and the mermaid. For this one, we're going to be using the seahorse pot, and I don't really like the coating that they put on them. And so for this DIY, we're going to try to paint it and see how we like that. 
I mixed some of that Caribbean blue with ivory to give me that really soft blue. We're going to paint it just because I don't think they're really pretty in the galvanized metal. And so I thought we'd do a distressed paint job all over. This one has the little seahorse on it. And I did just see these in my store. They brought these back this year. I saw the seahorse. I saw the starfish and I saw a new one. They had one with a mermaid tail. Super cute. So kind of just trying to paint all over, but leaving the little seahorse unpainted. Which it's kind of just stamped on there. So you're not really going to get like a really clean line there. But I do like the little jute twine at the top. So I left that on there. And then it does have like a little indentation um, for these little starfish, but you can't really see them. So I'm just going to use like a turquoise blue paint pen to kind of paint those and kind of bring that color out a little bit on that. And we're actually not going to use this as a planter. We're actually going to fill this with like beach vines and you can kind of do whatever you want with these, but I do like them painted better. Now, I thought the starfish needs to be white, so I'm just using a Sharpie white paint pen and going all in there and trying to color him in. thought it would be easier to paint like the metal than to try to cover up the blue. And if a little metal shows like around the twine at the top or around the little seahorse, it's going to be fine. I follow that up with a slight distress all over with a little bit of ivory. Again, for that little coastal farmhouse vibe. And then I go in with ivory and kind of go over the white, the stark white um, from the seahorse as well, just because I think the ivory is a little bit softer than the bright white. And again, there's not a real defined edge on this. So you can kind of, you're kind of, um, at liberty, <laughs> I'm just trying to get it painted the best that I can. Looks good, time to fill it up. I thought I would just start with some newspaper just to fill most of the pot up. Cause you're not gonna be able to see that part anyway, right? And you could use whatever. And then I don't really want the newspaper to be visible. Um, so I thought I would use a little Spanish moss. It's going to kind of look like, you know, give me that dried seaweed effect for my beach treasures. And then I thought we'd fill it up with Dollar Tree sand dollars, starfish, and seashells. So cute. Kind of trying to find like a good variety to kind of make it look like a pail full of beach finds when the only beach I've been to was the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and so that's just another way you can use those little planters and you don't even have to have a plant. You can just kind of fill it up with treasures, which I always love displaying. I take every opportunity. Um, my husband built me a coffee table that displays all my shell and like starfish collection out in my Florida room. And I actually have kind of a smaller version in my living room as well. I love it. I know the flash is way too bright on this, um, <laughs> but I'm going to try to show you it a little bit up close. But that's how the shells look on the top. And then you can see how the pot looks painted. Not too bad. Hey guys, I wanted to take um, a moment out of today's video and let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. Okay, coming up next, the next Shore Living DIY. Yay, they brought them back. The little sand bottles. These things are so cute. They've had the same ones for the past, um, I know, three years, but they are um, coming out again this year. This is what they look like. I think they're really cute, and there's so many fun ways to DIY these. They're so cute. This one says, Wish Upon a Starfish. I love these, they're so fun. I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree sand and just snip the corner off my little bag I had 
and that way I don't need a funnel to try to get this filled with sand. These are so cute. They have them in all different kinds of sayings and stuff like that. I like to buy them too for and keep them for Halloween because they make great potion bottles with the little cork toppers. But this one's definitely going to be a wish upon a starfish. Now the little tiny seashells that you get in the little glass bottles at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to scatter those in there along with some little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon. And kind of arrange those around with like a skewer. These would be really cute too in that little candle that we put in sand. Just add a little character. Little beach scene going on in there. And then just replace the cork. I love it. I did think that I could distress it slightly, the paint that's on there, to kind of give it more of a coastal vibe. So that's what I do. I go over it with a little ivory and then kind of clean the distressed paint off the like clear glass, just kind of leaving the distress on the letters just to break it up a little bit. But this step, totally optional. You know, I can't stand not to distress something, but this was a quick, easy shore living Dollar Tree DIY. And everything came from the Dollar Tree except for that little tiny starfish. And this is how it turned out. Wish Upon a Starfish. I love it. I love the color of the little starfish on there as well. Totally goes with the color in my living room. Now the next two DIYs, we're going to be using those long board signs from the Dollar Tree like these. I think they're bringing them back this year. I bought these yesterday, so fingers crossed. I don't know if I just got lucky, but hopefully they bring them back. They seem to have these every year. Okay, next DIY. You know these long signs, they have these again this year. This is the one with the seahorse cut out. I never really know what to do with them, but I had a great idea. I would take four of them and we could make some really fun little lanterns for summer. So I kind of figure out how long I want this little lantern box to be. I want this to be fairly long because um, I want the candle to kind of fit underneath the little seahorse. So I'm just going to use my little square from the Dollar Tree and try to make sure that I have it nice and square. And we can cut these little Dollar Tree signs down to size. It's a great way to get wood with a cutout in it like that without having to do any like crazy jigsaw. And I'm not a big fan of the thin signs. I think this was a great application for them. You'll just need four of the same size or the same one if you don't want to have to paint it or anything. So I'm going to cut them all four at this length. And we're going to do two different versions of this one. So you can kind of see what it looks like with some of the different ones. It looks like all these signs from last year are the same this year. Um, and then I have, you know, the extra wood that we use to cut it off. So I'm going to use that. Um, using another one as a reference line to give me a square for the bottom of our little DIY lantern. It cuts down pretty well. I am going to clean it up a little bit with a sanding sponge just to make sure that all my cuts were nice and smooth. And then we can start putting this together. This was so fun to make. I'm going to use some of those little tiny Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree to kind of help me put this together and try to keep everything square. So I'm going to hot glue this along the edge, flat like that, so I have something to glue to when I go to glue my next one on there. And I'm going to do another one right here, about halfway down. The reason I'm doing so many is because the Dollar Tree signs can be kind of thin. This one flush with the bottom and you don't want any bowing to cause it not to be square. And so now I have three little blocks that I can glue the sides to. But before I start doing that, I'm going to go ahead on the other side and glue down three more of those little Dollar Tree Jenga blocks. You could also use like the little craft uh, squares. But I think these kind of worked better because they're nice and thin. They're not real obvious. 
from the outside. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other side as well. I'm going to need for the other complete opposite side, I'm going to need those blocks on there as well. So that when I go to put it all together, I have sides to glue it to. So I just kind of use the first one as reference to kind of know exactly where I want to put them. And we're going to glue six of the Jenga blocks to this one as well. And I do it flush with the bottom so that I have something to glue the bottom onto as well. Now we can start putting it together. So this is kind of how the side is going to fit on there like that. And then the bottom will fit on there like that. So I'm going to do a little bit of hot glue on the side of each one of these. Line it up and smooth it out. Making sure that I have all three of them glued down and that it looks nice and square. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. I do put one more down here just because I did detect a slight bow. And I had some room. Trying to get as tight of a seam as I can. And since I needed one more on that one, I just went ahead and added one to the other side as well. And let's do that on the other side too. That way it's all kind of constructed the same. So now it's time to put the other side on. I'm just going to put glue on all four of our Jenga blocks now and lay this side on top. Making sure all of it comes into contact and everything looks good and square. And this was really easy to put together. It turned out so cute. I'm still using these. I do use the battery operated candles in them though. I'm not sure how well they would do with real candles in them. Um, and I just don't really want to make a mess with that. So now I'm going to go in and put glue on the sides of the other side, glue that in there, kind of making it square. And now I only have one side left to attach. I'm going to pull it back slightly and put hot glue on those four Jenga blocks as well. And we have the general structure of our lantern built. And the wood is really pretty, especially with that cut out of the seahorse. I think it's so cute. That's kind of like what it looks like from the top right now. And now we can attach the bottom. We had the four Jenga blocks down there, so we have something to glue to it. So I put glue on all four and then just sit the bottom on there. It's looking really cute. I do want to kind of frame out the top with some Dollar Tree nautical rope just to give it a little finishing touch, a little coastal feel along the top part of the lantern that we just constructed. It's also going to cover up the little holes on the top of the sign. So I just hot glue that to the top. And this step's totally optional. It would be cute without it, but I really think it really made it really cute and coastal. And we're going to continue that rope along all four sides, just hot gluing it kind of flush with the top. The holes in it from the signs, though, not that distracting if you didn't want to do this step. So that looks good. We're going to go ahead and cut that rope down to size and use a little hot glue to kind of clean up our little seam here. And then I decided it would look really cute and balanced if I did the same thing along the bottom. And so I continue that rope, hot gluing it along the bottom of this lantern. And it's almost complete. Just make sure not to burn yourself with your hot glue. <laughs> Isn't it cute? 
And now we can put a candle in there. I'm gonna use one of the taller Dollar Tree battery operated candles. You can use whatever you want. If you had like a timer one, that'd be great too. But look how cute that little lantern is, I love it. I'll show you what it looks like a little bit better after we make the matching one. I wanted to do another one with the little blue starfish cutout long signs from the Dollar Tree. This one I'm gonna make a lot shorter as you can see and I wanna pair them together. They're gonna look cute cause they're like different cutouts, different colors, different sizes, but we're gonna build it like the same exact way. Now I'm trying to make sure my starfish kinda go the same direction, but that's what I do. I cut down all four sides down to size and now we have our four sides. Just giving it a quick sand and then we can use one of those as reference to cut down another piece of the board to make a bottom. And now we're pros at putting these together, right? So I'm gonna put it together. I'm gonna construct it the same way that we did with the little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree. I love crafting with those little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree. They used to be kind of hard to find at my stores, but they seem to always have them now um, in quite a lot of stock. I think they know that we like to craft with them. So this one, I'm only gonna use three because it is a smaller lantern and just making sure the one on the bottom is flush with the bottom so that I can attach it. If you had a little bit square of a sign, you might need not need to use three, but since I wanted to make sure that there's no warping and everything stays square, definitely using as many of these as I can. So we're gonna hot glue on the outside and glue on the side. This is kind of a refresher of what, what we just did. And then do the same thing on this one. And then we can put our other side on. Hot gluing it to one side first. I don't want that hot glue to dry before I get it good and attached. And then finishing off the last side. And then now all we need to do is attach the bottom a little hot glue on each one of those Jenga blocks. I think this is just a great use for those long coastal shore living signs from the Dollar Tree. I really liked how the rope turned out on the other one. So we're gonna do the same thing on this one. It's gonna cover up the little hanger holes and it really pops up against that pretty beachy blue. So we're gonna frame out the bottom in the same way. And I did like the color on this. I did think it needed a little bit of distressing once I get it put all together. Cause you know, the other, the wood grain one already kind of looks a little distressed. This just looked a little bit too solid blue. And so I'm gonna tape this off a little bit. I probably should have done this before I attached the rope, but that's why I'm taping that down now. And then I'm gonna go in and distress it with ivory. And I like the existing color, but I kind of really just wanted to make this look as coastal and cool as possible. So I have that like existing blue, like showing through along with the ivory. And then I'm gonna add another color of blue. This is like a turquoise blue acrylic kind of mix them all together in that distress, really make it look nice and coastal. And again, you're probably gonna wanna do this step before you put your rope on there. But I did like it better like this. Instead of just one uniform color of blue, kind of mixing like three different coastal colors all together. Now it's time to untape my rope and see the final result. I think it turned out really pretty. 
And I left the inside blue. That's fine. It totally goes with it. And this is how the two of them look paired together with the little battery operated candles inside. These would great be great for indoor or outdoor decorations. I love them. I use them out in my Florida room. Now for the next Shore Living DIY, you're going to need one of the little ceramic um, starfish. And this would work really well on some of their framed burlap too. I'm going to use a thrift flip sign, but they did bring the ceramic starfish back this year. I think they might have changed the shape slightly, but it will definitely work. Okay, next DIY is kind of a thrift flip. I got this half price at Goodwill, so it was only like $1.50. But basically, you can use any kind of a Dollar Tree frame and cover the back with burlap because that's what we're going to need for a background for our next little shore living DIY. This one had like a glass or ceramic tile on it. And so I'm just trying to use some heat and try to pop that off with as little damage as possible to the burlap. But basically I liked this because I thought the frame looked nice and rustic and it already had like the burlap in the back. It was just a matter of popping that little tile off. We did a pretty good job. A slight snag, but nothing big. Now these are the little ceramic starfish they have at the Dollar Tree. They have them again this year. They have them in blue or white. The blue one's actually my favorite, but I always have a hard time finding that. I go over the whole thing um, with just some matte Mod Podge, and then I'm gonna go over it with ivory chalk paint. This is gonna kind of make it look like a real starfish and less like a super glossy ceramic starfish. And then my plan is to frame it out on the little burlap sign. So if you wanted to recreate this, you totally could with any kind of a frame, preferably wood, and cover the back with a little burlap. You could use the burlap bags from the Dollar Tree or any kind of, they have rolled burlap now at Dollar Tree, yay! And then I'm just gonna hot glue the little ceramic starfish on there. This was so easy to DIY and it really looks nice. It really looks high end. And just hot glue that on and frame that out like the piece of art that it is. This frame was nice and thick, so it kind of already stands on its own, but it also had a hanger on there so I could hang it. I'm going to use it on my shelf like this, and I think the texture and the finish of that starfish just looks like a bleach starfish. It looks so fun. Now for the next Shore Living DIY, I'm going to give another one of the little Shore Living signs just a little bit of a makeover. Again, they seem to switch up the signs every year, but maybe this will give you a little inspiration if you find one that you kind of like, but you think it could look a lot better. So this is another one of the Shore Living signs. It's kind of cute. I thought we could decorate it a little bit to make it even cuter. Not a fan of the brown wood around there and not a fan of the glitter. So the first step is I'm just gonna use a white paint pen and I am gonna paint over all of their words. Love you to the beach and back with white paint. It's not gonna totally mask the glitter, but it's gonna do a really good job. Just because the glitter definitely does not go with like a coastal decor in my opinion. And I, but I do love the white writing. So this was a good fix for this problem. The other thing I didn't really like about this sign, I love the coral and the blue like slatted boards. I think that looks really cute. And I love the shape of the little mermaid swimming underneath of it, but I'm not a fan of like that mirrored look on that. So that's something else that we're gonna have to kind of DIY on this sign to make it even cuter. So we got all of our words painted. And I always love to distress these signs it's gonna make it look more like a hand-painted sign and less like some printed paper. So just working in one direction, making sure I focus a lot on the edges there as well. I'm just gonna distress with a little chunky brush and some ivory acrylic. It's definitely gonna give you that more coastal farmhouse vibe. 
you get too much on there, you can just kind of follow that up with a baby wipe until you get like the perfect level of distress. Now, sometimes these um, signs can be a little bit warped. So if you're painting them and you kind of notice that they're getting warped, you can usually fix that a little bit. Um, sometimes I even use heat on the back of mine, like my Cricut Easy Press, to try to make them flatter. But I always kind of analyze them too before I buy them at the store. because Sometimes they're really warped. So now I'm going to go in and mix a couple of colors together. This was, I think, turquoise and ivory to give me this pretty color of blue. And I thought that would be really cute to do the mermaid in. And I don't want to go too crazy with this. So I'm just using a little makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree and trying to sponge that on her. Just kind of an easier way to paint something thin like this without getting anything on the layer behind it. And doesn't she look so much prettier in color like that as compared to the mirror? Not a fan of that mirrored look on there for sure. Once I get her blue, I do distress her ever so slightly with a little bit of ivory as well to give her that coastal vibe as well. Now, um, I am going to go over it with some matte Mod Podge just because I could kind of still see some of the glitter through the letters. But make sure your paint is dry before you do this step. But the matte Mod Podge, I have found, definitely does tone down the glitter as well because I really don't want it to be seen at all on this. And I do kind of go over the whole sign just to give it kind of an even finish. And then I'm also going to distress it a little bit more with some Antique Wax by Waverly just to give it a little bit more character, kind of working in one direction kind of focusing on those letters, making them a little distressed as well. That's going to help mask the glitter too. I just wish they hadn't put glitter on this sign. Then all my problems would be solved, right? <laughs> now, I wanted to replace the hanger with something a little bit cuter. I'm going to use some of the cube um, wood bead garland from the Dollar Tree and just try to make a new little hanger. This one is like kind of on like a really light, lightweight string. They're kind of tied in here at the end to make sure that they don't come off. So you do have to kind of unlace those to kind of get a workable thing. And I'm going to do two of these signs today. And so I thought I would just cut this one in half and save the other one for the next sign. And you'll see that in my in another video. So then I'm just going to use that string to simply tie that would-be garland. I'm just going to leave it natural like that to the top. Trying to make sure that I have an even number of beads. I find that it hangs better on my nail if I do. And this string is a little bit easier to tie off, I think, than the twine that some of those would-be garlands have. Now I got to that point, I kind of thought I was done. And then I was like, you know, I forgot that I really don't like like that wood look around the edges. So this is what we're going to do to fix it. We're just going to go in there with ivory and just kind of pulling it towards the inside. And it kind of gave me like a feathered look, as you can see, which I think kind of gives it a nice distressed look. And we're going to do that kind of all the way around. Don't want it too crazy, just a little feathered like that. And I think that really brightened the sign up. The coral part can stay brown, that's fine. But I kind of really wanted it to have a white frame to go with the um, white words. Just kind of working around my hanger. I probably should have done this step first. But it's definitely looking way more coastal farmhouse, I think. It's going to go with my decor a lot better. And it's a nice size sign for $1.25. And this is how it turned out. I don't have a very clear picture of this one, but it turned out a lot better. So remember, even if they have glitter on them and you don't feel that that's very coastal, you can definitely give them a little bit of a makeover and make them look a lot better. 
Now for the next Your Living DIY, we're gonna be doing just a super easy little candle DIY. I'm not 100% sure if they're bringing these candle holders back again this year. I have not seen them on their website or in the store yet, but they have had these the past two years. A little jar with a starfish and some twine. They have them in clear, um, like royal blue, like a pretty like beachy blue. I just picked up a clear one for this one and a little votive candle that I had from Dollar Tree. And this is going to be so easy. We're just going to fill it up with some Dollar Tree brown sand. It can be brown or white, really. And then just kind of work our little candle down inside. So cute. It's got like the twine around it with the little white starfish on front. And I just kind of display it with some of my existing decor. I had some coral I put up on a little shelf and um, one of the little Dollar Tree starfish as well. So easy, quick little Dollar Tree hack. And now it's time for the final reveal of all 15 of the Shore Living DIYs we made today. Hopefully um, you have got lots of crafting inspiration. If you did, be sure to leave me a comment below. Let me know your favorite DIY, something that you found in the stores that I'm not too sure about yet. That would really help. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Vision that I 
Thank you so much for joining me today and I also want to give a huge thank you to all of my Crafty Beach Bums members for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C and Lindsay. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and if you'd like to join the membership all you have to do is hit the join button under today's video. Now if you'd like more Dollar Tree DIYs, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting!